Hi, welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. This is going to be a fun episode where, I mean, we kind of did this already, but we're going to kill, um, You've been lo what? let's see, yeah, I mean, you don't have it, I mean, I've, we're not going to no, play this game anymore, so, I mean, it's not, we don't need anything. What? Really? Yes, I want to kill you. Fine, if that's the way it is. Oh, she's the hook? Has she always worn a hook? Interesting. Okay, so pale stone. What's that about? No. Well, if that's what you want. So he fights with the club. Got the blacksmith's hammer through normal means. Killed all those guys up there. Let's see if we killed Kale, right? Let's see if this guy has any armor. Wait, where are you? Are you that? sure? Well, I may sell out while you're away. <gasps> what, what the? Is upon you. Enough of this. So he uses the scimitar. Gosh. So behind the eight ball with the scimitar. He has the Saldora set, which I th do we see? Cap worn by settlers of Saldora, rather fancy but with low defense. Saldora flourished with the discovery of Brightstone deep under the settlement, but with this prosperity com came greed in equal measure, and the people were, were ever in search of what they lacked. Increased number of souls acquired. I wonder if that implies that Saldora's in, um, or was in, Volgan. The bright stone that brought prosperity to Saldora served only to stoke the flames of its people's desires, eventually leading to its ruin. Those bewitching, brilliantly gleaming stones are said to be fragments of a being that once roamed the entrails of the earth. Does that make sense? Because that's associated with Seath. And they used to be crystals. Nice. Uh, and I think I mentioned this, but I mean, if I didn't, this you cannot kill the cat. What now? Oh, keep trying. It's the only NPC that can't die. So, that's, that's novel. Alright, we killed Falcon. We're obviously going to kill the Emerald Herald. 
but we'll save her for last. Uh, yeah, we'll go kill all of these people. Because again, I'm considering this the end, so... Oh, she's so angry. Leave at once. I wonder if her thing breaks because, like, that breaks really easily. Attack. like they're not dying. Can you not kill her either? She's the other person you can't kill? was there. No, nope, no one there. We killed Targray. Uh, killed everyone associated with that, do we? We gotta remember to kill, um, the gr the Gurm. What's his name? Govlon. Uh yeah, well so I guess we're gonna kill Strayed. We killed the marionettes. I just can't have to kill this guy, I can't really. Did we kill like death already? I'm sure we didn't. Just in case we needed to level up or whatever, yeah, no.
Enough for you. You fool. You've offended the flames. So he also uses a club like Leningrast. Interesting, he said something in the middle. I thought he died there. I thought it was also an interesting death sentence. Oh, nice, he has a tight knit slap. That's funny. Oh, by the way, this door opens with the uh, steel key. Um, yeah, I think we got everyone there. I mean, there's Falcon here, but we killed him. Um, I'm pretty sure we got that. We killed this guy. There's no one here. There's only Pate here. We killed Magrold. Killed the Marionettes effectively. Uh, I mean, there is Dark Diver Grandal, but I will save him just in case. Um. I think that's all Goblin. And the Rat King. Did we kill the Rat King? Yeah, we killed the Rat King. Really interested in how Goblin fights. Oh, he's gone. Killed him enough. I farm, I farm here very often. Oh boy, yeah, he's totally a germ. Okay. Oops. So many of them look so pathetic. Grim Great X. I'm not sure we read that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well even so it doesn't say much. Um, okay. There's Orn effects, and we already killed her. I don't think there's anyone else in this area. Killed the Rat King. There's no one here. Dark Driver. Like, can we kill... I think we tried, and we couldn't kill... Chancellor Welliger. 
Do we kill this Milfinito? Milfinito? I don't hear singing, so... Yeah, we killed her. And... She has a tombstone, I'm not really sure what that's all about. Oops. Does she, like... Can you buy something from her? Can you just revive her and then she just says, Oh, I'm just doing this. Uh, we killed Agdane. There's no NPCs in the, uh, that you can talk to in any of the DLC, is there? Well, Alsana, but you can't kill her. That only leaves the uh, Emerald Herald, from what I remember. I don't know if she fights. I feel like there's got to be more. I mean, we killed a lot last time. What are you? What are you? Like, I feel like she won't fight me. should drop the crimson flower but she didn't huh all right Let's see if there's any other items that she sells from that nothing here those. Chaos. Yep, we have those. Lively I think that's it. <laughs> no respect. Die, you rotten lout. That's not very nice, is it? <laughs> oh god, she can headbutt me with her. Weird. Can I parry you? Okay, gotta... She's quite sprightly. Come on. She definitely has a dark thing going on. Okay, so it's a little later than that. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can, uh, parry a punch. Certainly can't backstab her, I would think. Oh, okay. Comfortus Silver Serpent Ring plus one. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. That's my, uh... That's my take on Dark Souls 2. As I say, I think it kind of differs from the average player of this game. In terms of the types of things we can know and the general opinion I have of the game. Um, yeah. I would give it a 7 out of 10, probably. Uh, lore wise, surprisingly deep. You know, I don't know, you, the viewer, can agree on the fact that, you know, there was like. You know, it, it kind of starts out weak. It starts out with this idea that there's all these lands and there's all these stories and there's all these things. You learn about Van, you learn about Alken, you learn about Volgan, Lanifer, Lindelt, Melfia. You know, you're just like building this knowledge of the area and it kind of just seems like a tapestry, not like a story. But that being said, like, it starts to, once you get to the Drang Lake Castle, I mean, there's some hints towards it, but for sure. Stories about the war with the giants and, you know, the information we learned about Vendrick. But, you know, we, uh, we eventually get to Chancellor Welliger and he kind of gives us the premise of the story. Where he kind of, you know, goes out and says, like... The, you know, Vendrick went, you know, inspired by Nishandra, went out across the sea and sold something that the uh, giants coveted or brought back a prize, although that's Captain Drummond's words. Um, and then it caused, you know, all this havoc, which led him to, you know, reuse the... Um, Shrine of Amana, which seemed to be in use from the time of Olaphus, uh, to protect himself against Nishandra totally getting power by hiding his soul behind a, a locked door as he went and hollowed in the undead crypt, which brings, t you know, which is one of my favorite moments in gaming history. Just kind of hearing about Vendrick and just anticipating the amazing Vendrick fight and then just finding his hollow body not even attempting to swing at you. It's awesome. Um, you know, and then we heard three other stories similar to it. Um, the Sunken King, the Old Iron King, the Ivory King. You know, these stories are the same. So the theme of this whole game or whatever is that of Manus and his control or you know maybe not his or whatever not maybe not that being soul uh, or control but maybe more just like dark the abyss whatever and the control on the lands for many many years I mean I guess you could say the same thing about the old ones you know as they're called by the cat um, you know the ones that kind of embody Seath, Gwyn, Isolith, and Nido. Um, they have control of the land in many, many ways. So perhaps you could say, you know, that the way that they're trying to communicate it is that in this universe, the souls they found in the fire mean everything. It just happens to be that Gwyn was found the most powerful soul and split that between, I guess, him and Seath. I mean, him and Seath and the Four Kings, but they don't really address the Four Kings here. So you have those two souls coming from the soul, the one soul. You have the Nido soul that he found, Isla's soul that she found, and then we have the Dark Soul, which Manus found, or the Furtive Pygmy. I don't know if we've talked about, you know, the Furtive Pygmy being Manus, but 
whether he is or he isn't, I mean, I, I would say my opinion is that he's not. Um, in other words, there's some information we learn from Dark Souls 3 that makes me believe that it just doesn't fit. Um, but at the same time, like, uh, or on the same token, I should say, we just heard from um, Vendrick that, you know, he was like, um, the abyss took form, you know what I mean? So I think that Manus is just like a being that's a physical or a corporeal embodiment of dark and the abyss rather than, a, you know, the furtive pygmy like as a being. Um, anyway, <laughs> those are my random thoughts on that. Um, but yeah, so, unfortunately, I think Dark Souls 3 kind of, like, <laughs> a lot of people, at the time I'm recording this, uh, the new Star Wars, uh, is, um, The Last Jedi by Ryan Johnson, and there's a lot of discussion about how he kind of abandoned all the things that J.J. Abrams set up. You know, people like it, people hate it. I mean, there's both, or people love it, people hate it. I mean, there's different, you know, interpretations of it. But, like, regardless of your, like, enjoyment of it, it is still kind of a thing that um, there was once. I never really noticed these stairs here. I mean, it kind of looks like there was something here before it was grown over. Like, all the plot points that were set up by J.J. Abrams were completely abandoned. And they kind of do that here. Um, there's some elements of Dark Souls 2 that play over to Dark Souls 3, but Dark Souls 3 just kind of pretends that Dark Souls 2 never existed. In a lot of ways. It's like, I think it talks about Baldur, I think it talks about, like, Astora and all... I mean, it's just like, it's just like... All the kingdoms that have fallen and had their names forgotten, although Katarina is mentioned here, they're brought back and they are kind of talked about as if they exist. And it's like, well, what are you know what universe is this? I mean, I think they try to cover it up with the the last DLC, but you know, it's it really is, you know, Miyazaki showing that. Well, it's probably Miyazaki showing he doesn't care. But it's Miyazaki showing that, you know, although they kind of thematically went with the idea of Dark Souls 2, that, you know, that there's constantly, you know, um, kingdoms rising and falling, and that they change names, and they change shape, but it's still the same story. And then, you know, they kind of take that literally with Dark Souls 3. I mean, obviously we'll talk about that with Dark Souls 3. Um, but... Uh, I don't know, I kind of don't, you know, and they use, they use the same items, they use a lot of the same concepts, and obviously from a gameplay perspective, they use a lot of stuff, so, I don't know, I suppose it's fine, but it just seems like Dark Souls 2 set up something, and the, the logical Dark Souls 3 would have not been about Gwyn or anything, I mean, or whatever, it would be about something brand new or it would be a way of like really unifying everything but it does half half ass version of both of those things um maybe it's perfect maybe it's the perfect ending to this whole thing but um there is a really great story with uh dark souls 3 and uh i'm excited to play it and kind of like i don't know i've like i played it a bunch i um, you know, I've seen kind of the theories, uh, coming up, like, I've seen videos about it. I think Dark Souls 3 is when, you know, the YouTube community, the lore community really flourished. Um, before that it was just, like, a handful of, like, people on forums or Tumblr and, and then, like, Epic Name Bro, who took it seriously. And now, like, you know, I mean, there's been a couple that have been there from the beginning, but I think the content really started getting good. So I learned a lot about Dark Souls 3, 
and uh, I know the story pretty well, um, but I've never played through it while consciously like reading everything and like putting things together in that way. Um, so I'll probably be realizing a lot of things um, while playing uh, this time. Uh, at the same time, I I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I'm you know I'm up to date on a lot of uh, opinions on the lore, and I even have some original thoughts uh, about Dark Souls Three that I, I think I've you know I haven't fully found anyone that shares my opinion on things, um, so that might be interesting way to you know kind of put it out here in a lore through. Um, but some of it kind of has to, and some of it kind of relies on the idea that there's cut content or at least there's you know trailers and things that showed things that we don't see um, in the actual game so I you know since it's just a lore through I'm not going to be trying to assemble all of the information I have or anything I'm just trying to uh, give my perspective on a very complex game and and whatever. And I'm trying to think what build I'm going to do for that, too. Anyway, if you can't tell, I'm just trying to fill for time. I, uh, you know, I thought maybe there would be a few more NPCs or whatever, uh, but this didn't warrant a whole video, so I thought I would just talk about uh, the next stage and and get ready for that. So, anyway, thanks for watching my Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 lore through, if you made it through those. If you haven't, please go and watch my Dark Souls 1 lore through as well, um, where I talk a lot about my opinions on the lore and what I think is important and what I think is not. And yeah, um, we'll start with Dark Souls 3 in a little bit and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll put together some things from Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2 and make a kind of a cohesive story of the whole thing and uh, end out the series in a glorious manner. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.